Life is complicated, and so are the decisions that voters make. If there's anything for Canadians to learn from the U.S. midterm elections this week, it's that important lesson. Let me explain. See, in the lead up to the U.S. midterms, there's one voting block that got a lot of attention in the media, black males. And it's a voting block that I naturally pay a lot of attention to when it's mentioned in the news because in the Canadian context, that's a group I belong to. So in the U.S., we started to see all these articles being published about black men being integral to the election strategy of both Republicans and Democrats, both parties wanting to mobilize the black male vote in the lead up to this week's elections. But this attention being paid to black male voters turned quite critical and, in my view, disrespectful once Democrats realized that mobilizing the black male vote might not lead to better outcomes for Democratic politicians. Stacey Abrams, for example, was running for governor of Georgia, and she lost. In an interview with MSNBC just a couple of days before people went to the polls, she argued that her low polling numbers were a result of misinformation being consumed by black men. Now, that's alarming to hear, but Abrams didn't actually give a specific example. We don't really know what she means by misinformation. In fact, it seems she was just advancing a narrative that suggested there could be no legitimate, educated reason why a black man might be drifting away from the Democratic Party. One of President Joe Biden's advisors, Keisha Lance Bottoms, backed up this narrative offered by Stacey Abrams. Bottoms suggested that Stacey was on point, and her example, her proof of misinformation being consumed by black men, was an observation that her children are consuming NBA highlights on YouTube, and Bottoms has observed that on YouTube there's misinformation being piped in. Once again, no specifics given. We don't actually know what that means. And it just comes across as this very paternalistic, maternalistic attitude, dismissing the point of view of black men who might be considering their different political options. Now, as you could imagine, the Republican Party delighted at this. The Republican National Committee was pushing the comments from Bottoms and from Abrams all over their social media because it was an absurd thing to say. But the Republicans kind of overestimated their credibility, their popularity, their traction with black men. Just because black men might not be thrilled about the Democrats didn't mean they were going to be thrilled about the Republicans. Now, Republicans had good reason to think that they might make some headway when it comes to black male voters. For example, Pew, one of the most credible research and survey companies in the United States, released some data showing that 82% of black Democrats were concerned about violent crime when heading to the polls this week compared to just one third of white Democrats. And if you're a black male who's disproportionately vulnerable to violent crime, disproportionately affected by crime policies, you might be thinking, hmm, should I be voting for Democrats after they embraced defund the police and Black Lives Matter? Maybe they can't be trusted to keep our community safe. Republicans were also confident that they might get some black votes because black families, like all other families, are feeling the pressure from inflation. The economy's hard on a lot of people right now. And Republicans, like Canadian conservatives, assumed they would benefit from people being concerned about that issue and wanting better stewards of the economy in office. But it turns out that voters are complicated. Black male voters, too because we've seen the exit polls coming out of the midterms and Republicans lost nine out of 10 black votes to the Democrats in Georgia. That's a wake up call. That's a sign that just because Republicans might be right on some of the policies, just because they might be right on some of the messaging, doesn't mean that's enough. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes relationships, it takes showing people you care about them to reconsider who they vote for. And if there's anything for Canadians to learn from the U.S. midterms, it's that. The right policies just aren't enough. Mm -hmm.